Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. How are you? Good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm tired, of course. Uh, you know, we've been... Yes. You we've just been got on the back road, from where? On the road. Yeah, we, so we just yeah. got back from uh, the Army-Navy game in Philadelphia, and and Arm, uh, Army pulled off the win. Uh, man, it was it was a great game, and it was a lot of walking. I can tell you that. Yeah, you got your steps in. I did get my steps in, and so my my watch was happy. <laughs> That's great. awesome. But we we got a, two amazing guests today, and um, you know, let me stop blabbering and let's uh, go ahead and introduce today's guest, Emily. So today we're chatting with the showrunners of Fox's The Cleaning Lady. They're here today to give us a military exclusive look at the show and share their insights on producing a hit show. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Miranda Kwok and Melissa Carter. Hey. Hi. <laughs> How y'all doing ladies? We're, good. We're doing We're great. <laughs> so it's a pleasure having both of you with us today. And uh, can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from? Uh, we'll start with uh, Miranda. Oh, we're uh, we're both in Los Angeles, actually. We uh, just had our finale last night, so we celebrated that together. So if we you see guys did, and I have so many. I have so <laughs> many questions, but I don't want to spoil it for the ones that have not seen the finale yet. But <laughs> it was good. Well, well Melissa, I, I heard I heard the word hangover, so but you look refreshed and, and hydrated right now. I'm not really hungover, but like at my age, if you stay up past eleven, you, you feel the effects of it. <laughs> we had a really good time. We um we had it at Miranda's house and we invited basically anything that had anyone who had anything to do with the show. So we had post-production actors who had bit parts we had main actors it was really fun so we had a really good time that's awesome yeah yeah and it was great to have a you know to watch it with a fresh audience so there were a lot of people who hadn't seen the show and they were you know all like getting up you know excited and they're like oh my god i can't breathe and <laughs> this is so intense so it was really fun to go on that ride with everyone um because we know the show so well but it's like it was it was it was really fun to watch with people Awesome. Yeah, it was great. So I noticed you had, um, did you have Lou Diamond Phillips on the show before? Cause he, I, yeah, he was I did. in, oh, that he's, isn't he great? He, so he directed, <laughs> um, an episode for us this season and then came in and guest directed a few spots when another director couldn't, um, including all the Vegas portion in episode 11, uh, that aired last night. So everything that you saw in Vegas and that he directed, but he, he's great. We, we love Lou. Now Lou was a was a wonderful interview, and um, you know I, I just didn't realize how much stuff he's he's involved in, and and he's yeah he he's a b busy man. He, he yes. Yeah. Keeps, <laughs> yeah he, he definitely keeps the lights on over there. Well, he has a great yeah, sense he, of humor. Who loves him? Cast loves him. He's just a pleasure to work with. So yeah, so talented and such a big heart. He's so giving. Yeah, I, I, and the first thing when we booked uh, Lou, I just went back to La Bamba and not my Richie. So I started going, <laughs> not my Richie. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a classic. Yeah, yeah every once in a while the crew would just start humming, la, 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 La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm sure he does that all the time. So. Yeah, I, I know I was not original at all, but I'm sure he's heard it a million times, but it's okay. <laughs> Okay, it's fun for us. <laughs> Absolutely. We got, so, we got so for Kim those back. who don't know, The Cleaning Lady is a drama-filled and action-packed show that spotlights the experience of an immigrant doctor living in a new country as a cleaning lady. So Miranda, you created the show. Where did the idea come from and what inspired you to capture the story in TV form? Um, the 
the show was actually adapted from an Argentinian format called La Chica Que Limpia, The Girl Who Cleans. And essentially that was the story of a cleaning lady who is in the wrong place at the wrong time and ends up working for the mob. Um, and so I was inspired to adapt um, this project um, and recreate the show in the, in the US with the story of an undocumented immigrant. And um, that was actually the part that was most exciting to me is, is to really touch on a topic um, that doesn't get enough attention here in the US. And there are so many um, immigrants here. There's so many people who come from other countries who face so many challenges who never get to have their story told. So that was um, the inspiration for creating you know, those characters in, in this storyline. And in the show, viewers um, see Tony, um, who's played by Elodie Young, um, navigate her new life in America as cleaning lady, mother, and doctor. Tony is a very smart woman who keeps herself safe in dangerous circumstances. <laughs> so, Melissa, what is Tony's backstory, and how does that contribute to what fans see on screen each episode? So, her backstory is she was a surgeon in the Philippines. How can I avoid looking at myself while I'm talking because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to look at me. I would like to look at you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll, we can switch it. We can switch it up. Yeah. Let's switch it to the, yeah, let's look at everybody. There we go. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if I look at myself, I won't remember anything. Um, so, one of the, so um, Tony De La Rosa, is from the Philippines. And like you said, she's a surgeon. She was a surgeon, but her son was born immunocomp with an immunocompromised um, condition, which means that he, uh, he, he couldn't be exposed to any germs. Um, in the first season, he was in a plastic enclosure. He had to have a little space suit with an oxygen tank when he would go out. And this, um, the, basically the only place that she could hope to get him a bone marrow transplant would be in the United States because the it's, it was such a rare condition. And because he's Cambodian and Filipino, it, it's even harder to find a match. Um, there aren't bone uh, marrow registries in the Philippines. So she came to the United States to get him medical help, actually because played by Lou Diamond Phillips, that he was a match. <laughs> And um, when they came over, the backstory, he got nervous and backed out. His wife had died uh, recently, and so he just was very nervous about the procedure. So that's why she came over to the United States. And then um, when the donor backed out, instead of going back, she decided to stay and just wait for another donor, do everything she could. Because the show is really about a, a mother who would do anything to save her son. And so we, when we were breaking the season, season one and season two, we looked, we looked at her character through the lens of a, a mother who would do anything to save her son, but also a surgeon who, even though she's working as a cleaning woman, she, like so many immigrants that come to this country, they often have a background that is like they're engineers or doctors or, or you know, people who are well educated. And in this country, we often look at people who come into this country. Um, who you know we just have all of these um prejudices that that don't often line up with what people are really doing when they come here <clears throat> so there's that and then it's also her um her drive as a surgeon and the fact that she can make decisions and that she um advocates for people do no harm the hippocratic oath so that's part of her the core of her personality and her drive as a character so it was really fun to to think of stories for her in that in that light yeah, that's that's awesome, and I know, um, like you like you talked about, you found ways to kind of highlight some real issues uh, in, in the show, and so uh, you know, from making sacrifices in hopes of a life, uh, living a better life in a new country, to gaining access to healthcare, uh, uh, viewers can really kind of empathize with Tony's experiences. So, Miranda, why is it important to kind of shine a light on these issues? Oh, it's, you know, these are issues that so many people face, whether you're undocumented or just impoverished or uninsured. Um, there's so many challenges with our healthcare system, uh, you know, especially in the in the states that, you know, if you don't, if you can't afford certain treatments that you're unable to to take care of your own. And um, we really wanted to highlight that journey and that struggle for Tony in, in various ways. 
um, you know, the, to to show how how many you know how many challenges she's up against, how many doors slam in her face for various reasons, and um, you know, really shine a light on people who face similar circumstances. Now, so speaking of making sacrifices, we have military service members and their families watching us live right now. What message would you both like to share with them today? Why am I drawing a blank? <laughs> well, <laughs> first of all, thank thank you for the the ser your service to this country. I, I, it always amazes me. Nothing. If I ever feel like crying, I always watch those videos of when service people come back and reunite with their family. And, it, it, and I've been on a lot of flights back and forth for television. And when you see it in the airport, it always makes me sob my guts out. So th first of all, thank you for your service. And I think what's great about um, television is that it's a way to entertain. It's a way to connect. It's a way to, um, I actually pitched a show uh, of military families and it was right after Army Wives. So it didn't get, it didn't go because there was our, Army Wives was already on the air. But um, you know, I just thank you, and I'm I'm we we feel honored that you even want to listen to us today. So thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you all for your service. Um, my brother is actually in the military as well. He uh, recently finished a term as regimental sergeant major in uh, the Canadian military. Um, yes, uh, he's with the uh, the 48 Highlanders. And so, um, you know, but not a lot of people like basically that is, as you guys know, you know, he 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 reached the highest rank that he could. And not a lot of people um, see that diversity in the military. And I think that that's something very important to be acknowledged. Um, and I, I think so, you know, that representation is is kind of key in, in all as in all fields and all aspects um, to, to see people at the top in leadership roles um, from from diverse communities and to recognize you know that we are all the same you know we you know everyone who's in the service is, is in it for the same reasons and and serving the country and um, you know doing their best and and I, I think if if we all judge each other less, um, and and appreciate each other more. I think that is a lesson for everyone, not only the military, but for for you know every community is to have that a greater understanding for for each other and acceptance for each other. Awesome. Thank you so much for the kind words. We really appreciate it. Um, and so let's get back to the cleaning lady. <laughs> um, so. And this is kind of what drew me to this show. So the cleaning lady has elements for anyone from like romance to action. It's got drama, like it's got everything good that you just want to sit there and, and watch. Um, and so in season one, viewers learn how dangerous being a cleaning lady can be, at least in Tony's case, right? Like at least in Tony's case, how dangerous a cleaning lady can be. Um, so. Melissa, how have you seen Tony adapt and grow given the circumstances surrounding her relationship with Armin in the new season? Mm. Well, I think one thing that the audiences have picked up on, I loved your line about how dangerous it is to be clean. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going into that field. That is yeah. that right. Is <laughs> uh, yeah, so I. I, I think that what we've shown is that um, if you look at Tony's reaction to what happened in the pilot and and what it was like to we we got her not that she got used to it, but she definitely started navigating that world um, with more confidence um, th that things didn't rattle her as much as they did in the beginning, because what we want to show is that crime does affect everybody, even even though she's doing it for a good reason, a good cause to save her son. It still has um, th there's still consequences to her action and her decision to, to remain in this world, even though it's for good. So we've watched her become more confident and and to navigate that space. Um, if you just look at the last image of, of the finale from last night and compare that to the first her first interaction with Armand, where she was kind of afraid, could barely make eye contact. And now she's like a 
you know, a badass boss at the end. So it, we have been arcing that out throughout the, the two seasons. Well, well, I'll be retiring in about a year and a half. And uh, I, I just, I just <laughs> exit out a career, a career choice of mine going from one dangerous field to the next. Uh, so <laughs> hospitality and cleaning definitely won't be on, on, on my list of retired, retired jobs. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> but, but the, the chemistry between Tony and Armand is, is probably the most entertaining part of the story. So, uh, Miranda, as a as a showrunner from a showrunner's perspective, uh, what is it about their di- relationship dynamic that you enjoy the most, and what can fans of the show expect to see moving forward? Uh, what I love about their dynamic, it, it's a very unique relationship that we haven't seen before, and um, you know, I, I think that you know, it's that I mean, that's what I love is that they connect on um, a really different level, and it's not you know. It, I don't think words can describe it, you know, so it's, it, it's, I think beyond love, it's, um, it's two souls who have come together, who totally get each other, and um, on a very deep level, and that's why they, they're constantly calling each other out, um, they hold a mirror up to each other so that they can, uh, you know, they, they can see each other, they, they, they yeah, they, they basically, um, they know what they stand for, they know who they are as human beings, and they also see sometimes the bad choices that they make and um, and, and basically, you know, try to try to get them to see things differently, to make a different choice. Sometimes um, I think, you know, Tony often gets Armand to be a better man. And I, I guess is the, I don't know how else to describe it, but to make those better choices, to do something good. Um, and and that is a, a big part of who he is. And that's why they you know, they when they came together. Um, it, it really was this uh, r- really interesting connection. Man, that's, what what was sounds... fun is, oh, sorry, go ahead. I know, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, see, in season one, what was interesting is that he, it had been a long time, a long, um, it, it had been a while since Armand had had a chance to, to be a hero. And so we constantly make that reference that in, when he looks at, when, when Tony looks at him, he, feels like a hero he's he's doing this he saved her life now he then he saved her son's life and that o- over time though when she starts calling him on on his decisions as miranda said it 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 changes their dynamic so they have this push pull where it was easier for him to be around her when he was the hero but then when she starts calling him on things um it, it challenges his beliefs and who he is but they're both they're both people that entered the criminal world. For, they just sort of stumbled into it and they could have gotten out, but both of them chose not to. And that's, I think that's that calling each other on their, their hypocrisy that keeps that friction alive between them, or at least one of the things. Yeah. It sounds like the relationship between me, Kiana and Emily. It sounds like we got the same situation. <laughs> like I was the hero and then they start calling me on my BS and they're like, you know, they, uh, we're holding you accountable. That's what friends yes. are for, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and reminded me when Taylor Swift's birthday. So big shout out to Taylor Swift. I guess her birthday's today, and I didn't know that. And Emily called me out. It on is my, in, my the, in the National Guard's birthday. In the it's, National so Guard's birthday is today. Day. It's a great I'm, day for America. No, yes. <laughs> what? Jamie. Fox. It's Jamie Foxx's birthday. Our good friend Jamie. It's his birthday today. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Jamie Foxx is a pretty good awesome. show. Jamie Foxx, so. watching this. That's a good day. No, but I want to take a second just to read some of the fan and viewer comments for you guys. So Eddie Hill says he absolutely loves the show and it's on his DVR every week. Um, Julie yeah. says congrats on your finale. And we have another comment that says every week I'm glued to the TV. This is one exciting show. Will there be another season? Ooh. <laughs> all, all we can say, things are things are looking positive is 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 all all we can say is that you know fox um has totally supported this show from the very beginning they've always been very excited and enthusiastic um about putting these different voices on screen and and supporting a show um 
with this kind of representation and um, just that it's a very unique story, different elements um, that we've pulled together. And, and so they've, they've been excited from the get go. And um, so far, you know, they're happy with the season numbers are up. So I think it's looking promising is all I can say. Come on, Fox, what are we doing? <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> Bring it back, Fox. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes, no, that's awesome. And so Miranda and Melissa, so what is your favorite part of the job while working on the cleaning lady, like working with the cleaning lady crew? What's your favorite part? My favorite part, uh, it was working with our line producer, Joe Latito, who uh, the line producer is the person that he, he they have mul multiple jobs, but the the basic thing is to bring it on budget, on time, and make sure the trains are running, that um, they're responsible for bringing the crew to us. Like when we interview the key positions, he brings his crew from other shows he's worked on. And he's just, uh, he would, he's someone who's creative. And um, I just love the give and take of like, I'll take a great idea from anyone. Like I, you know, whether it's a production assistant, you know, the person running and getting the crew lunch or coffees or whatever from that position all the way up to the top. And Joe was just a really great collaborative, fun person to work with, but that's, we we're lucky. We get to work with all kinds of people and, and it's, you're creating something together as a, as a hive, you know, a very exciting beehive of people. So that's what I love is just how social and fun it is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Joe, Joe Latito is awesome. And, um, you know, his job is, is actually managing the budget, you know, line by line. And um, every time we throw a creative idea at him, uh, you know, it's, he, he has to figure it out. It's like a puzzle of how to make that happen. And um, almost everything that we throw at him, he makes possible. And um, as Melissa said, the entire crew, a cast and crew is like that as well. And, and that's definitely my favorite part as well is that you know you have so many talented people in all these different facets and everyone is adding their their piece of art their piece of magic to the show you know whether it is the you know the the set design um or if it's like you know a, you know a piece of lighting just a little hint in the eye or you know so everyone has their specialty and and it all works as this team and i also feel that um, everyone on the show is is so invested and really gives their all and they really show up every day, you know, with that enthusiasm um, to tell these stories and, and to 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 make it the best it can be. So um, I find that really exciting. And it's it's honestly it's magical. Yeah, you'll get sometimes we, we get story ideas because the the location manager will call and say, oh, my gosh, wait, wait, till you see this location that you could, you could kill somebody here. It would be great. Or <laughs> our Joe will call and say, you haven't had an explosion in a while. Where are your explosions? What about a helicopter? And you're like, okay, all right. We can a helicopter. Sometimes we come backwards from the crew where they're like, you know, get us a helicopter and explosion. And we're like, all right, we'll, we'll come up with yeah. that. So. Yeah, we threw in a helicopter, got a blue Lambo, <laughs> got an airplane. We like, we you know, they're like, you got toys, we'll use them for sure. <laughs> for two chat for two chicks running a show, we uh, we managed to have some pretty high testosterone moments <laughs> the first two seasons. So, <laughs> so, but, so if, you, if you need a cheat, if you need an extra uh, a chief eating a donut in the background. Uh, we got one right here, and, and I, I do my I do my own stunts, so I, I'll eat my own donut. I don't need anybody. To <laughs> to That's awesome. We actually had some really wonderful volunteers um, for the finale. Um, oh, I can't spoil anything, but let's just say, um, <laughs> like, we had a faction of the military. We had. Um, you know, you know, a, a couple like a police. We had a few different factions representing um, and performing a ceremony, and um, they they basically showed up for us guns, and, and took a Twenty-one gun salute. <laughs> twenty-one oh, gun no. salute. Yeah. So, yeah, think about that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. The, the <laughs> twenty-one gun salute. Also, um, there was the the color guard folding the flag that also donated their time. So it was it was really it was really lovely 
Um, and again, it was just, you know, people coming together to, to be, be a part of, be a part of it all. It's in, uh, that's amazing to us. So if you haven't had a chance to catch the magic, the talent and the chemistry of The Cleaning Lady, you can watch season two of The Cleaning Lady on select streaming services. And of course it's on Fox as well. Please do. Yeah, season yeah. one is on HBO Max and season two is on Fox and Hulu.com. Yes, yes, thank you for sharing that. So if you have not started <laughs> that show, you need to start that show. And like Miranda just told you where to go, so no excuses. And um, Miranda and Melissa, where can our viewers go and keep up with you both as well as the show? I always have um, to look at my Instagram. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, we, we got you. You, you got it. I got, got you covered. Too. It's so sad. All right. I don't even know how to find Perfect. it. Yeah, Where's Instagram. It? We're we're mostly on Instagram, um, on Twitter a little bit, Facebook. Um, I haven't updated my website in a while, so there's old information on MirandaQuag.com, but it, it is a little oh, yeah. bit. That's old too for me. So I'm uh, at Melissa underscore Carter underscore Newman is my Instagram. Perfect. Or you can okay. just find Miranda and look for her friends. I'm one of her friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do anything with Twitter anymore. So I don't even look at that anymore. But yes, oh, you can so do that. Good. Uh, good. <laughs> yeah. Got you. And, and, and for our Chief Chat viewers, you can uh, view this episode uh, as long as past episodes on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central tomorrow. We welcome John Oates of Hall & Oates to the chat. Also, mark your calendars for 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, December 20th, when Lieutenant Colonel Brian Slade comes to discuss his book, Cleared Hot. So Miranda and Melissa, we had an awesome time talking to you um, and getting to hear about the, the cleaning lady and the season finale. Uh, spoiler alerts. I think Emily was waiting on a spoiler alert, like, <laughs> she, she's good for that. I she's didn't get it, it though. I didn't get any spoilers. That's okay. That's Absolutely. okay. <laughs> but but I I love the premise for the show because um, uh, in the military we're we're I, th I tell people military is the true melting pot because we literally get people from all over the world uh, and we have to work together as a team to get a, an objective or a mission done and so uh, I, I was pretty ignorant coming from Louisiana at 18 years old not knowing anything outside of uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. And once I got in the military, I learned a lot about different cultures and, and uh, different people from different countries and, uh, or, or states. And so I've always been fascinated with people and, and where they fr come from and what kind of makes them tick or what, what, what makes them do the things that they do. And uh, you giving that perspective with this show is, is awesome. So uh, not going to be a cleaning uh, person at all uh, when I, when I start. <laughs> When I separate, too dangerous. <laughs> too dangerous. It's dangerous. I think I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You know, place to be. It's just that's yeah. Stay safe. We, we, we got good health insurance now. I don't know what it's like on on the retired side. So I'll, I'll wait to see before I I jump into that. But just I want to just thank you all for your time uh, and and appreciate what you're doing. Uh, you know, making you know through your art, we're able to kind of get away from what we have to deal with on a regular basis and we can kind of sit back and 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 watch somebody else go through drama instead of you know facing our own drama in our own lives and so uh we appreciate that and thank you so much thank, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for, for having, having us it's really nice thank to meet you. all of you absolutely and so and if you don't mind holidays. hanging on yes, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy yeah happy holidays happy holidays happy holidays happy holidays happy christmas it's all Absolutely. coming up so fast. Yeah, it is. It is, and I haven't, I haven't, I haven't shopped for anything, not one thing yet. Yeah, I, I know. It's me. It's, it's what I do. <laughs> Amazon. Oh, yeah. Get on oh, yeah. it. Shop my exchange. Shop actually, we're, 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 we're yes. gonna do shop, shop my exchange. Where do you shop? Yeah, we're here. Shop. Shop. Right down. Shop my my shop? Oh, nice. Well, I mean, so you have to be you have to be a veteran or active duty. It's it's a military specific. We it doesn't <laughs> listen. 
it's not too late to enlist. We we just we got you. We can get you to somebody's basic training really, really soon. And you get amazing shopping privileges. That's so great. yeah, all the endless perks. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. But yeah, if you don't if you don't mind hanging on to after the live is over with, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But uh, at this time again, thank you again, and and we want to say goodbye to our, our our viewers and thank you for tuning in to Chief Chat uh, uh, and Chief Chat out. Thank. You.